الحمد لله رب العالمين واشهد ان لا اله الا الله ولي الصالحين واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله صلوات الله والسلام عليه ما رسفت برادرز سيستس ان اسلام الله سبحانه وتعالى سيس ان القران وما خلقت الجن والانس الا ليعبدون i did not create the jinn and the human being but only for one purpose and that purpose is that we worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and in worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that's where we have our power that's where we have our pride respected brothers as this in Islam so if a people or a human being doesn't worship Allah then he is like an animal as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has explained in the Al-Quran they are like animals but they are even more stray they've gone astray more than the animal can be So my respected brothers, we have to understand what is ibadah, what is worship, how do we worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, because if that is the only purpose why Allah has created us, Allah didn't create us like the, the animal who only has to eat, live and die, but we are human, we have to worship Allah, eat like the animal does, have intercourse like the animal does, everything. The difference between us and the animal is that Allah has given us a mind, a brain that we can be able to think. And Allah has made a difference between the human being and the animal by making sure that the human being has to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and is accountable on the, on the day of judgment. And that is the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So what is this worship? Then people are divided into four different categories. As human being, mankind as a whole. The first category are those who refuse to worship Allah. So anyone who refuses to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is an arrogant person. A person of pride. Showing arrogance to Allah, his creator. How do we understand the arrogance here? Allah said in Al-Quran, when Allah, your Lord, commanded the angels to prostrate to Adam, they all did except Iblis. Shaitan. Then Allah said what? Abba, he refused, was takbara, and then he showed pride. What is the pride there? He said, I'm better than him. You created me from fire and created him from sand. So he shows that he is more better than Adam, alayhi salam. But the Lord of Adam and his own Lord created both of them and he is saying that the one who is being created from fire should prostrate to that who is created from sun. How can you show to the one who has created you that you know better? So anyone who refuses to worship Allah is an arrogant person and is arrogance not to mankind but to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The second, anyone who worship Allah and worship something else is known as mushrik, an associator of partners with Allah. Then we have the per person who worship Allah in a worship that is not known to Allah and not known to Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. This person is known as an innovator. He has introduced something and then designed a worship for himself. He does it thinking that he's getting something from Allah. But in actual sense, he is sinning against Allah. Then the final, which is the fourth, those who worship Allah as one and only and do not associate partners with Allah, they are the ones who are on the right path. As Allah says in the Quran, وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَا مِنْ قَبْلِكَ مِنْ رَسُولِ Allah is saying to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam, I did not command anyone before you within the messengers except with one command that there is no Lord but I, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so they will worship me so worshiping of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has to only be to Allah and not to any other deity so if we understand that these are the four types of people then we have to belong to one we said the first are a person who is arrogant the person, second, is a person who is a mushrik I gave an example of a mushrik or a children of partners of with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and I made an example that today you see some people they go somewhere in some other countries 
and you see them circumambulating, going around the grave of a person, a dead person, and they say he's Wali, a friend of Allah. Why going around the grave? They say because he's more loving to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Brother, you are going to die like he has died. Allah has not commanded anyone to circumambulate, go around the grave of any human being, not the Prophet. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and not in other human being. So doing that, you are making a shirk. Shirk meaning that now you are worshipping that dead body which is in the grave. That dead body needs you more than you need him. Because he is dead and now he needs you to make dua for him. Because you are a living person. His deeds have come to an end with his departure from this world. So we don't have to worship the grave. But rather, we pray for the person who is dead. Then those who worship Allah without what Allah has commanded, the designs and tasks of worship, so you see them celebrating. Why? We are celebrating because this is the day on which Muhammad wasallam was born. We don't make it a worship. We come together. We talk about the Prophet Muhammad wasallam. We can do that at any time. We celebrate his name by every time respecting him and making sure that we worship him in accordance with the Sunnah. Talking about the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Talking about what Allah has made of him. And following his examples. These are what Allah has commanded us to do. But not to design a worship that should have anything to do with Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Then this type of worship that Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala has commanded us to do. We have to understand that there is no human being. Not a messenger, not a prophet, not an angel has right to command us to worship except the creator. So Allah say, he is the only one who has the right to command us to worship. Not even the prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa That we have made you within the sharia, that we have commanded you, that you should follow. And don't follow the way of those who do not know, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said. So every type of worship has to be ordained by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The second is that we have to understand that there is no worship that Allah has ordained unless Allah has ordained the worship and given us a period when we can be able to perform that worship. Five times daily prayers, yes, Allah says in the Quran. He says in the Quran. In the Salat Akanat al Mu'minina Kitab al Mawkuta, he has ordained unto us to pray at periods or certain periods of time. So you cannot pray the morning prayer at, at the afternoon period, nor the afternoon prayer at Isha, not Isha at Asr, and so on. Allah has made all these as format for us to be able to pray on time. So the times are fixed and fixed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and taught by the Prophet Muhammad. Then again, we have to understand that we cannot worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala unless from the beginning the worship has an intention. So we don't only get up and then start praying because we are Muslims. No. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya you are amanu, O you who believe, when you stand up to pray, make sure first wash your face. Then Allah taught us how to make wudu. So it means that we cannot pray unless we make wudu. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has commanded us on that. And then we have to understand that our worship cannot be accepted unless it goes in line with the teachings of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So all types of worship, we cannot fast Ramadan. In man we say Ramadan, only in Ramadan. We cannot go to Hajj any time that we think we want to go to Hajj. No, Allah has made fixed days. Within even the month of Hajj, Allah didn't make the whole month to be a month when we can go and do the circumambulation. Allah has fixed the time and how many days you can spend there and how many days you can go in order on which day that you have to make tawaf, on which day you have to be in Arafah, on which day that you have to even begin the Hajj. All these are ordained by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and taught by the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So all our worship has to go in line with the teachings of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Then finally, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made it mandatory on every human being, every creature to worship him. The trees, the animals, 
All creatures, the sun, the moon, the stars, the sea, the snow, all are worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The snow can never fall unless by the command of Allah. And Allah has given the snow period when it can fall. And how long it has to stay. And how long or what benefit it can do for man. The rain shall never come or fall unless by the command of Allah. And when it falls in the rain, Allah has made wealth that it can benefit people. And in the rain, Allah has made punishment that is going to destroy other people. All these are under the commands of Allah. No rain, a drop of rain shall fall unless there is an angel that guides the rain or that water or the drop of water to where it's going to drop. All these are under the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The sea waters, the sky, the stars, the birds that fly in the earth, all are worshiping Allah. And Allah has made us a rule. وَعَبُدُ رَبَّكَ حَتَّى يَعْتِيَكَ الْيَقِينَ no one, no matter how your situation is, unless you are a mad person that you don't know what you're doing. No matter how much you are sick, if even you cannot move in a part of your body, except your eye, you have to pray. So Allah says that it is mandatory on each and every human being that he worship Allah until death comes unto you. So brothers and sisters in Islam, if Allah has created us only for the purpose of worshiping him, then we have to understand what is worship and we have to make sure that we spend our time in worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that so that Allah will make it even in the times that we eat our eating will be worship because if we have intention of eating in order to preserve this body to be able to work and get halal then the eating becomes worship if you are going to sleep and your intention is that you preserve the body to make it more stronger that tomorrow you can go to work and then be able to work and eat halal, the sleeping becomes worship. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu says, a piece of food in the stomach of your wife is what? Sadaqa. So all that we do will be a worship or will be worship if only we have good intentions. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, You have been commanded only to worship Allah with sincerity. So your intention is very, very important. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa said, إِنَّمَ الْعَمَالُ بِالْنِيَارِ So your intention is very important. That you have to have an intention in order that you can worship Allah. The only messenger that Allah has created and made him that can be followed is the messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That in our everyday life, وَمَا أَتَاكُمُ الرَّسُولُ فَخُذُوا Allah has generalized everything and said, whatever the messenger has given you, commanded you to do, do it. So whatever the Prophet Muhammad said we should do, we have to do. And whatever he forbid, we abstain. That is Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa We have to know the greatness Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made him to this prophet or messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we will not follow anyone but follow Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa in all our daily life. As he even mentioned in one of his hadith that even to have intercourse with your wife it's ibadah. It's sadaqah for you. Someone say, Messenger of Allah, to enjoy and then have hasanat or have rewards. He said, if you put it in, in what? In haram. You make zina. Would Allah punish you? He said, yes. And he said, that is it. If you put it in halal, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward you for doing that. So this is a great prophet, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Make sure that every time you worship Allah, it should go in line with the teachings of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and with that you can be able, in the light of Taala, to arrive a good to a good destination that will guide you on the day of judgment to the of Allah subhanahu wa taala. My respected brothers, this is Islam, inshallah. A brother has just given me a paper. He